From 1999 to 2015, you see a progressive decline in the number of women who are coming into our National Assembly. Why is that the case? Because our politics has become so monetized. What I'm suggesting is that in Nigeria, and in fact in most countries of the world, more steps are likely to be needed to achieve full majoritarian democracy. Take the example of pre preventing vote buying. This, of course, as you know, this is especially difficult when there are many poor citizens for whom 5,000 naira is a lot of money. And especially if they're cynical about how much difference their vote would make anyway. It is in this context that the Commission will continue to evolve measures to address such negative trend of vote buying and selling, which has become the most visible example of transactional politics. During the last governorship elections, the Commission made deliberate efforts to situate the voting cubicles in such manners that ensured not only that the voters had additional secrecy while casting their vote, but perhaps more significantly, that the voter was denied opportunity to showcase or flash his or her vote towards the conclusion of a vote-buying transaction. Today's debate is structured around seven themes, including education, security, economy, corruption, elections, gender, and the right of citizens. I actually thought you have cancelled my candidature. So I decided to come and defend myself. I think the opportunities are in organizing ourselves around our numbers. But not just our numbers, but our values. Because that's the only way we're going to beat the divisions of ethnicity and religion. People in power never negotiate with people who are weak. We've not used our numbers to show them that we're strong. So for me, we need to disrupt, and we cannot think that we are only limited to two choices. The courts have joined the fray, and in the process, what we have is total confusion. Even at the level of the Supreme Court, it's really a matter for the political parties to determine. The courts have also taken the view that if the law, your own rules, internal rules of a party, makes prescriptions, these are the ways, these are the processes you must follow to select a candidate. Then the courts have gone ahead to say that if you don't follow those rules, then you have run foul of the law. Vote buying tells us two things about our democracy. The first thing it tells us is that the citizen is beginning to count in the electoral process because what we know from the numerous court decisions, ju uh, judicial commissions of inquiry that have investigated earlier elections, is that the money that's spent in elections usually went to thugs, party barons, and uh, godfathers. Today, politicians are now giving that money to voters directly, which means there is a qualitative improvement in the electoral process. It's really important we focus on the importance of people understanding the dangers of vote buying. We have come a long way since 1999. We had come to a point where we thought that only the ruling party, in fact, if you're in the ruling party, you had an automatic ticket, you were going to get re-elected until your time was up, and then you choose who succeeds you. We've gotten to the point where we've shown that we could pick B for A.
Today's program is designed to improve our understanding of hate speech, divisive narratives, and drivers of tension in Nigeria. Whenever a politician shares message on social media, Twitter, Facebook, what have you, tending to cast aspersion on other candidates and other parties, just bear in mind perhaps he or she is doing that because there isn't much to talk about. If the security agencies and the election management body play by the rule and are seen to be fair and impartial, there's a tendency to have a free and fair election. But when citizens perceive that security agencies are partial and that the election management body is tilting towards one of the parties or some agents, uh, political parties or um, um, those who are looking for election um, votes, then there's a recipe for disaster. We should not keep quiet when we see divisive messages, when we see head speech. It is our duty to counter them. And it's our duty to also collectively make our politicians understand we cannot fall for this dummy that because we speak the same language, you are the best thing that has happened to me. We cannot fall for this dummy that because our son are similar, then I should vote for you. Because interestingly, over history, politicians are interested in themselves and themselves alone. We are the future, we are the dream. We are the nation, we are part of this Yes, we are so amazing That's the least we shall be At the heart of the nation, changing history Let's go How can they say that we are finished? We have just begun When we have nowhere else to run to We have nowhere else to go So get out of the way Out of the way of the land dreams we are the nation we are part of this oh, oh. we are the nation we are part of this